With at least 305 breeds of rabbit across 70 countries, and more than 30 species of these tiny fluffy rabbits processed in the most advanced farms with up-to-date technology and machinery, the sophisticated farming of connies has boosted the number of tiny ones all over the world in the last few years. China has traveled a long way from labor-intensive farming to tech-savvy farming. A similar transformation is also noted while breeding these cute tiny animals, where almost everything is automated in clean and tidy processing farms. The arrangements for such factories are mind-blowing. With such mass production, these meats are supplied all over the world. The top producers in the world are France, Spain, and Italy. China is pretty behind in this race. What is so exciting about rabbit farming? What are the arrangements made by scientists and experts to boost breeding? These exciting questions have some amazing answers, so let's dive in deeper to know more about livestock management and production. Surprisingly, rabbit growing has a long history in China, and to achieve the best of it, years of research and analysis were done by experts, and guess what? The results are incredible. Without a doubt, breeding chickens and ducks is way simpler than raising these fluffy animals, as some of them need almost daily health checkups. However, it might be a tedious job to do, but the returns gained out of them is also phenomenal. Many people have come out of the darkness of poverty after they began a rabbit farm. Apart from benefiting farmers, over the years, nations have discovered 20 new domestic varieties of those tiny ones. Most of the modernized farmlands here are diversified in East China, like in Shandong, Jiangsu, Anhui, Fujian, and Xizhang, whereas in North China, one can spot Hebei, Henan, and Shangxi provinces. Lastly, now it comes to Southwest China, where Sichuan and Chongqing are two major areas where livestock raising is carried out. These are the prominent areas in the country where almost 92% of the total production is produced the whole country. All thanks to a selective breeding which was adopted widely by most of the provinces and farmers running these innovative farms. Priorly to fair breeding, they had one Chinese Angora, but gradually, with all the outstanding success, they adopted varieties of breeds like the Taihang, Anyang Brown, Carabin White, Saibei, etc. And for the fact most of the breeds of these rabbits were discovered overseas, nevertheless some of them were also discovered locally. Why are major countries looking to excel for rodent farms? Well, this is major because these animals are used for three major different categories, namely hair, meat, and coney. So to achieve maximum profits from these three categories, China has two national-level stub farmlands. One of the examples of such developments in the nation is Shenhai Stub Rabbit Farm in Zhejiang Province, which is known for gigantic high-yield long hair rodents. From the past reports, it was found that this farm is capable of producing an average annual hair yield of about 1,700 to 2,000 G. However, these numbers are only for one farm, but the wool rabbit breeding is much higher than this, and eventually the output is more. So the reports say the total wool yield from the female rabbits reached up to 4,729 G per year, and that of male rodents was 2,982 G per year. Ideally, in the world's most populous country, there is a sorted fixed processing enterprise for rabbit hair, meat, and coney. All of these firms are responsible for producing and dealing in semi-finished and finished products. Well, one fascinating fact about this is there are varied types of hair markets or meat fairs where they specially showcase their products and also provide information about various product markets so that there is maximum marketing of such stuff. Advancements in the sector are only possible because of the strategic readjustment of agriculture structure and accurate implementation of the strategy. This amazing government support helped in the development of agriculture and also rabbit farming. And the best part is China now has a huge scope for new development opportunities. More than the new advancements in the process. Over the years, the process has dramatically evolved and the advancements have kept most countries wonderstruck. Crazy, isn't it? Indeed it is. The entire technique is now given an artificial insemination technology touch and this is applied to almost all the majority of the areas. They freeze the semen, embryo transfer, and lastly, one can finally get a genetically modified rabbit through it. This is one part of advancements. The rest of them are also classic. Let's glimpse how. The fattening period of meat rabbits was priorly for about 120 to 150 days. However, with some changes in the procedures, the period for the same has been drastically reduced to almost 90 to 100 days. For the shortened fattening period, the quality of the output is also improvised and now each marketing body weight of an animal weighs about 2.5 to 3 kilograms. Also, the dress out has been elevated to about 48% to 50%. Priorly, it was much harder and a tedious process to race rabbits,
but now modernization has made it much more convenient. When compared to the figures, dozens of rabbits were raised in each of the households, whereas the scale of farming has also increased amazingly. In the current situation, farmers raise several hundred or even 1,000 at a time. Whatever is improvised, but the essential part in all of this is maintaining the quality of an animal. And guess what? This is already happening. The quality of rabbit skin, meat, hair products, and fur has been improved at phenomenal rates. This is already evident in China's first rank in the world in terms of the number of rabbit raisins and also in the quality of the output. Hair and meat have the highest exports in the country. From the historic reports, it was found that the nation was at its peak in 1979 when more than 60% of the world's total trade came from the world's populous country. And when talking specifically about hair and meat, the numbers were 4,065 tons and 32,998 tons respectively. So these processes are not only carried out at homes, but mainly there's regionalized rabbit farming. When it comes to operations, sideline operations are the major part and are in pretty high proportions. However, some proportion of rabbit farming is also in the form of primary operations, large-scale and specialized raising. Which breed is most common and most demanded? Going ahead with the varied categories, the first one is the long hair rabbits, which are mainly produced from German Angora, China Angora, Anhui series long hair, and lastly by some of the French Angora. These were the prior ones, whereas the most recent ones include Zhenhai Giant High Yield Long Hair, Pearl Series, Jiangsu Series, Zhenhai Breed, Yimeng Giant, and Taishan Course. All of these breeds are the most prominent ones, and two thirds of the total rabbits we can spot among these varied species. Now, coming to those species which are specialized for meat are the New Zealand White, California, Japanese White, Chinchilla, Belgian Air, Checker Giant, Lop Air, Zika Meat, Elko Meat, China White, Harbin Big White, Sai Bay, Tai Hangshan, Fujian Yellow, and the list continues. Next is the most famous worldwide breed called the Rex Rabbit of Germany. This is famous usually in the United States and France, and talking specifically about China, the history of the Rex is pretty new here. This primarily depends on a variety of other species. Some experts have developed this species by experimenting extensively between strains. They usually experiment with the New Zealand breed, American Rex as a female parent, France Rex as a first-generation male parent, and lastly, Germany Rex as a second-generation male parent. All of these have a blend to become one of the best species of these fluffy ones, as all the characteristics are prominently developed in Rex rabbits because of their genetics. This is just a start as the entire world's experts and scientists are trying their hands at experimenting with varied fur animals and bringing the best output possible. Is there any danger involved in breeding fluffy and furry tiny ones? Surprisingly, yes. There is a danger involved and experts need to take utmost care as once rabbit disease is spread, it can be very harmful. Experts have studied deep about these pathologies of viral hemorrhagic disease and they have also come up with a vaccine that can treat such disease and many others as well like pasteurilosis, bronchiseptica brucellosis, clostridium welchi disease, and colibacillosis of rabbits. Utmost care needs to be taken while feeding them as all the diseases revolved around nutrients and feed mixing. So finally, what are your thoughts on rabbit breeding in China? Will it expand to the next levels in the coming years? Do let us know your views in the comments below. And if you enjoyed watching how amazingly nations have geared up livestock breeding, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content. See you in the next video.